Ah, the Vine Center. It's hosted a number of great players during its life. One of the first being a young man named Julius Nwosu. Julius would go on to have a great career, playing with the likes of David Robinson, Dennis Rodman, but his is a story that might never have happened. You see, Julius is from a small rural village in Nigeria, and you might be surprised to know that basketball wasn't even his first sport. Volleyball was first. I played volleyball with my brother. You know, it was, we were all boys, you know, so we, play, we all played volleyball. Between volleyball, I was playing soccer as well, you know, because when I go to school, it's soccer. Everybody plays soccer. So there's a guy, his name, we call him Engine Knocker, you know, so he's like real strong. I don't know, they made him out of a steel or something. So he grabs me one day, said, if I ever see you play volleyball or any other sports, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> he grabs me and pulls me over to basketball. That was it. I think I was about 14 or 15. I played basketball since then. Julius' path to Liberty Basketball came thanks to a traveling missionary who approached Julius at a crusade. And he was like, do you play basketball? I said, yeah. And he didn't really quite believe me, but he was like, really? I was like, yeah. He was like, can you spin the ball in your finger? I was like, yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm from Luther Rice Seminary. You know, my school doesn't have basketball. But I used to be at Liberty University, and they have a good program. I would like you to go there. And then he went back, took my pictures, gave it to Coach Myers and everybody. They looked at it like, mm, OK, well, let me try it. The coaching staff was taking a chance. Many players from similar backgrounds simply don't work out. But there was something in young Julius that gave them hope. His adjustment to a new culture, however, would not be easy. It took me a while. It took me like uh, about a month or two to actually understand what people are saying. Not that I didn't speak English, you know, because Nigeria we speak English. I'll go to class. I don't understand anything. So I take a tape recorder, go to class and record everything, come back and listen it over again, and then I get it. <laughs> yeah. It happened for like two months. And then I remember after two months, I walked, I walked into the the Moss Hall, and a guy was talking. It looked like my ears were open. I was like, I can understand everything he's saying. But the language wasn't the only adjustment he would need to make. American basketball was a little bit different than the style he was used to playing, and he would be forced to sit out his first year at LU. But that's when a classmate would invite him to play in a city league. Who knew that games in a small local gym would end up changing the trajectory of his career? So every evening he picks me up, and I'll go there and I'll play. All that keep, you know, I keep improving, just like picking up the game quick, quick, quick. When it comes to being athletic, I was like top of the line, top of the chain, you know. I could flat out run, do anything. I play soccer, play volleyball. So I think that's what helped me because I can make a mistake and catch up. First day of practice, I was just right there with everybody. You know, but at first I was, you know, like every day I worry. Like I said, I go to that small chapel, I pray all the time. I was like, God, man, they're going to kick me out. I'm not even good enough, you know. I don't think, you know, <clears throat> they say I'm so good, you know, they, they have everything up, but I don't think I can measure up to what they're telling me, you know. But I was glad, like, I had that year off. I used that year and work, work. Because every day I get out of class, I come to the gym, play, shoot, do whatever. He did more than just hold his own during his career at Liberty. Julius would be a two-time all-conference player, finished with over 1,200 points, and even have his jersey retired. And that was just the start of his career. And when I graduated, I went to Spain. I tried out with Dallas. I tried out with Dallas and uh, Detroit, Lakers. They all have interest to get me back to the training camp. But my agent, you know, preferred me going to Europe, playing in a good league, and then come back the next year and, and try it again. You know, which worked. I'm feeling like, okay, I'm good now. So the Spurs invited me to a mini camp. I came down, man, I put it on the guys. They were like, man, that kid can play. And then after the mini camp, everybody was supposed to break and go home. They didn't let me go. They were like, stay. And then they brought in uh, Terry Commons, J.R. Reed, play one-on-one -on -one with me, did the same thing again. They're like, man, we got a kid, he's a, he's a keeper. Julius played the 94-95 season with the Spurs before going back overseas. All told, he played in 14 different countries. 
These days, he's living in Houston, Texas, retired from basketball, but not from sports entirely. He's now in a regional soccer league playing with teammates from his home country of Nigeria. I was glad to be a member on the team. And I, I've two seasons I played, I've led the team in highest goal scoring, the league, not even the team, the league. So, fun playing. Yeah, we always, we won the championship five times in a row, five straight. Yeah, everybody panicking, oh, maybe you guys should go find a different league. Because <laughs> they're so much better than everybody. Julius's career may have begun on this court, but it's the lessons he took with him when he left that truly make him a champion and make him one of the greatest to ever don the Liberty uniform.